coming from a background where I wasn't allowed to speak up, like it was very intimidating for me. Mm-hmm. Even up till now, I'm still learning to like break out of that shell, but it is still intimidating. Mm-hmm. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are. And as always, I hope you're staying safe. So today we have another international spotlight video. I interviewed Pearl and Jesse. They have been followers of this channel for uh, quite a while since uh, almost the very beginning of my channel. It was really exciting to finally have a uh, Zoom interview with them. So they shared their experience about what it's like being in an intercultural marriage Pearl shared her experiences with navigating a different culture and adjusting to that. And just to let you guys know, they do have their own uh, YouTube channel. So please uh, go ahead and give them a follow. Uh, we're really trying to get them to 1000 subscribers. I will also link their socials in the description box of this video. If you are interested in doing an interview, if you're interested in sharing your perspective of what it's like being an international student or an immigrant in the United States, states definitely feel free to reach out to me on formshelp.international at gmail.com i would love to get to know you and i'm sure many viewers on this channel will also enjoy hearing about your experience so please don't hesitate to reach out to me and without further ado let's jump into today's interview today we have uh, pearl and jesse and um, I'm super excited for this interview because they have been uh, followers of mine for a while since probably when my YouTube channel was very small. Uh, and Pearl and I frequently have interactions on Instagram and in the YouTube comments. She's a very, very active subscriber. And also, um, you guys have your own YouTube channel, correct? I highly suggest that you guys follow them. Uh, they're very cute. I love seeing their like interactions on the channel, but uh, take it away. Tell us a little bit about it. All right, so uh, we are J and P Squirrel. That's a capital J, lowercase N, capital P, and Squirrel. You know, kind of like ice cream. Like, yeah. Um, but generally, we go through, um, give you a little bit days of our lives, take you on some adventures. Uh, we like to try to do YouTube challenges because those are really fun. Um, Sometimes we get like story times involved. So we talked about like how we met, some first dates, we might go into just some more relationship advice in the future. Yeah. Um, so just kind of share our, our little life with you. Yeah. yeah. What made you guys want to decide to start a YouTube channel together? All right. So personally, I wanted to start a YouTube channel because I wanted to be able to overcome. Um, I wanted to gain confidence actually in speaking to people because I love talking, but then I get shy when I have to talk to a large group of people. Yeah. Like, like doing a video will help me gain that confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just wanting to <clears throat> support her and help her with these fun adventures. And obviously, it's fun getting to uh, mess with all the YouTube software and editing videos, which can be a little frustrating at times, but <laughs> yeah. it's definitely, definitely new and adventurous. So learning how to advance your level and create different things so i mean i'm still learning too it's been a couple years i've only seriously started taking youtube in the past year and i've been learning every time even like in my last video i was like oh i didn't know i could do that you know so you just have a very precious relationship and i love seeing it evolve and how comfortable you guys getting in front of the camera as well like it's it's very cute i love it yeah so the purpose of these interviews is to give people insight on what it's like being from a different culture what it's like living in the united states what's like immigrating to the united states and also uh, a lot of my subscribers uh granted that they are you know pursuing immigration a lot of them are in multicultural interracial marriages as well and i think you guys um are great candidates to interview for in that regard as well why don't we start by just kind of uh talking about each of you uh just a little background like i i know we can talk about pearl like where you're from how you even ended up in the united states and jesse kind of like your background as well and then maybe a little bit about how you guys met okay yeah so i'm ghanian um it's in west africa mm-hmm. and i got to the united states in 2018 i came here purposely for my master's program uh, which i graduated in 2020 mm-hmm. and i'm currently doing my phd so mm-hmm. i'm in my second year of my phd mm-hmm. and um so back in ghana when i was done doing my first degree i thought of like pursuing my 
a graduate program, but I didn't know how to go about it. And then I lost my dad in my first year of my undergrad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I thought like that was it. Uh, but lucky for me, my final year program in Ghana, there was this professor who came to Ghana and he did a workshop for us and I was part of that workshop. And he was like, he liked the way I was interacting in class. So he recommended that I apply to SIU where I'm currently at. And I did and I go through it. How difficult was it, just logistically speaking, to find a program to apply all of that? Because I had like my professor, uh, I have that person, like he's a mentor to me right now. Because I had him guiding me through, it was much easier. Yeah, because he, he uh, connected me to another professor who was my advisor for my master's program here. So it was very easy for me. And Jesse, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, uh, born and raised in Illinois, United States of America. Um, small town kind of a guy, um, just a normal like high school, wasn't a big sports guy, but um, for at continuing education, I just did like a two year to community college um, for a trade, which is heating and air conditioning. Um, after school, taking about a year to get a job and just been there for seven years now. So um, I did watch the video on your channel about how you guys met. Uh, so I know a little bit about it, but um, do you gonna just kind of want to briefly tell people about that? And also, I recommend that you guys go check out that video as well. Uh, but just tell us and hear a little bit about how you met. Uh, so generally, um, we're both kind of flirting around with dating apps at this point. Um, I probably got like a match account and maybe something else. Um, so you just, you know, you hit likes and then you start chatting with people. Um, I found her from Ghana, so I thought that was really cool. Um, never really went on a date with an out-of-country person before. They're all American. Um, so, I mean, by this stage, I've had several dates. I'm just like, it's going to work or it's not. So this is like a Friday where we started texting. And I'm just like, hey, I got no plans tomorrow morning. Want to have breakfast? It's like the day after. I'm like, I don't care. Whatever. It's going to work or it won't. <laughs> So yeah so for me i i was in a relationship back in Ghana before i got here but then because of the distance and then some issues we had before i moved things were not really smooth so we broke up and i was all about school and it became very stressful you know yeah. so a friend of mine was like why don't you try online dates and i'm like online dating is not my thing i don't think i trust it uh, but during christmas break i realized the campus was so quiet and was so boring mm-hmm. so i decided to download the app and when I did, I realized that I have to pay to see those who message me or like my picture. Oh. I'm like, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that app for like two weeks or three weeks. I hadn't paid for it. And then I got so bored and I did. You know, I finally gave in and I did. And I went for some few days and I was tired of like having to tell people who I'm in the US, you know, come, like coming from Ghana. So mm-hmm. I, had, like, I was tired of doing that. So I decided to like uh, delay the app. And that's when he messaged me. So. Mm-hmm. Just snuck in the door. Yeah, I didn't have anything to do with that time. Exactly. <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> and that's, I mean, that's one thing, like, as an international student, I can totally relate with being stuck on campus during breaks, uh, when it just feels so boring and lonely, because everybody just goes to see their family, and you're just kind of stuck there. So it must have been a really great experience to have somebody, like, spend time with um, and get to know during that time. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was fun just planning dates on the weekends and building that connection and just learning about each other and our different backgrounds and countries and stuff. So yeah. that was really fun. What made you, you know, realize that that's it? Like, I want to get married to this person. Uh, let's see here. Well, I guess since I proposed, I guess I would be the one to do that big commitment. <laughs> or I had to willingly accept, which I'm always grateful for. Um, no, I think some of the times that I knew Pearl was the one for me, it was just I think our fourth or so date, um, we just sat down to watch like a movie and mm-hmm. we we're just chilling, doing really nothing. And like inside, I internally, I was like, that's strange. This, this feels like a home. Like, I know this is this is nice. And I don't know, I never really had quite that comfort with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of when I those thoughts started creeping in. And then gradually it was like, yeah, this is, this is going to work out well. And what about you, Pearl? Like, at that point, did you know you already wanted to marry him? Um, I think I already knew because we're talking about it. And I knew he'll be, he'll be proposing. I just didn't know when. Okay. Yeah. So, like, the fact that he supports me with my school when I'm so tired with schoolwork, I complain to him a lot. And he's like, he just listens. 
and then try to like give me encouragement you know and the fact that we share the same belief and faith Mm-hmm. I realized that he's the one. When you guys were getting married, I saw your ceremony video. It was very beautifully done. Was the ceremony what you expected when you were, you know, growing up, imagining a wedding, or was it different? For me, it was different. Um, even though I knew I wanted to study outside, I had no idea I'd be married to like a guy from a different race. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking I was going to have my traditional wedding, you know, wear all those uh, nice Kente clothes from Ghana, but it didn't happen. But to be honest, I really love how this wedding turned out. Um, fortunately, my parents couldn't make it, but it was like, it came out perfect. Like, perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, as a guy, we don't really plan our future wedding too often. So <laughs> as long as nobody died and there was a ring on each other, I think it went great. Do you think uh, that there are challenges or struggles in your marriage or in your relationship in general that are unique to other uh, couples in the U.S.? I mean, only uh, little things. I mean, generally, we both like have each other's best interests at heart. So it's not like we're having big fights on huge issues. Um, I don't know. Little things are just like when I say, what do you want to eat? Or what are we doing for dinner tonight? And she's always thinking of Ghanaian foods. And I'm always thinking about going out and picking up like a burger. So like those worlds clashing. She's like, oh, we can make okra soup and banku. I'm like, yeah, I was kind of just thinking like a quesadilla from like Taco Bell. But uh, it's cheaper, I guess, do it this way. So <laughs> and then learning how to deal with her hair. It's, there's always something going on we got to do. Which is a world for me because I have the simplest, thinnest hair. And I never have to worry about it. Yeah. My hair is very stubborn. Like I have a very thick hair. So when I first came to the US, I had like a relaxed hair, which is like that. Uh, but then I think the weather wasn't working so well with my hair. So it was breaking, but I decided to like cut it and do natural. Mm-hmm. So I tried doing natural, but my hair is very coarse, like falsy hair. Like it's very, very stubborn. So hard to comb through. So I had to go back to relax my hair again. Yeah, she yeah. asked me to like help comb her hair. It's like, just part it and then comb it this way. I'm like, like I try to start. And I'm like, I can't even start. I don't even know what I'm messing with. <laughs> Like another planet in there. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, not much help. I can help her cut off her braids when she does it. That's pretty easy. Yeah. It takes like three hours, but. <laughs> okay, yeah. We talked a little bit about cultural adjustment in your guys' relationship and stuff, but in general, Pearl, for you, just like living in a different country, was there any kind of changes you had to make in your values, beliefs? I know. So back home, my family, my parents were very straight when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I have seven siblings and they're all girls so eight girls I mean seven girls plus me eight girls Mm -hmm. and my I grew up in a Christian family and my parents were very straight like you don't make friends with guys Mm -hmm. you know you can't even be open with them and it's like the ugly is always right you know Mm -hmm. even if you have a point you can't say it out you have to keep quiet and listen to them Mm -hmm. so you didn't we didn't have the um the voice Mm -hmm. so uh, you are very very timid and my parents are all about books and school. So mm-hmm. I didn't really have a social life. So even when I went to like college for my undergrad, I didn't have any social life. It was all about school. So I even graduated from that school, not knowing some other parts of the school. I've never been to any of the programs. People talk about it and I can't even say anything about it. So yeah. Uh, do you feel like you have changed in that regard? Do you feel like you are now more open to sharing your voice? Uh, I think... For now, I am a little bit. Maybe with people I'm close with, like his parents. Because we, we're having a discussion and his dad says something I disagree with. I tell him I disagree with it. But in my mind, I'm like, I can't tell that to my mom. <laughs> Even now, I can't tell that to my mom. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm changing regards to that. I'm able to like speak up with people I'm comfortable with. I'm sure the YouTube channel will also help in that regard as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's helping. It's helping. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that the education is similar or drastically different between Ghana and U.S.? I'll say it's somehow similar. It's not so different. And when I came here, I realized that back home, they were very tense on us when it comes to education. Okay. Looks like the lecturers or professors want to fail you back mm-hmm. home. But here, it's like they want you to pass. Okay. So I feel like exams back home were much more difficult than, than this place. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. so it was easy for me to like just... Um, transition one more thing to us so like here when I first came here to where I cried that I wanted to go back home because 
in class, they can ask a question and probably the answer is um, Kofi is a boy or Jesse is a boy, if that's the answer, right? Yeah, yeah. But you see those Caucasians and like they are talking for like five minutes. And I'm like, the answer is Jesse is a boy. You know, that's it. So if I like want to talk, that's all I'll say. So then it's like, I'm not interactive in class. And then I was feeling very intimidated about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I realized too. Is this like, do you feel like it's a good or a bad thing uh, to have this opportunity for a discussion? I think it's a good thing, but coming from a background where I wasn't allowed to speak up, like it was very intimidating for me. Mm-hmm. Even up till now, I'm still learning to like break out of that shell, but it is still intimidating. Yeah. Yeah, I just prefer, even if I know the answer, I prefer to be quiet, you know, because yeah. it didn't give us that free will to speak up. Mm. Yeah, but it's something I'm, I'm hoping we'll not do with our kids because I want our kids to be able to speak up when they have to speak up. If I'm wrong, I want them to tell me I'm wrong. I want us to raise our kids differently from how I was raised. You know, mm. I'll still discipline them or we will still discipline them, but I still want them to have a voice. Yeah. You know? To speak up when they have to definitely we want to be someone they can talk to and someone they can feel comfortable um just having a chat and speaking their mind with mm-hmm. um obviously yeah. and raising them in like a christian way uh, loving jesus and, and jesse did you come from a big family as well um i wouldn't say a huge family i got two sisters and a brother um so i mean moderate sized i guess and was it also uh, a strict environment growing up or was it a little bit more relaxed no, it was fairly loose. Um, as a kid, um, also we were told to get out of the house a lot. So we're always over at friends' house and sisters are gone doing things. And so we're just out making friends. And so yeah, I got a very outward make friends kind of personality. And speaking of uh, families, how was it introducing each other to your respective families? For me, it was pretty easy. I don't think it was challenging. I told my mom I was dating this guy in his vacation and she was cool with it. She didn't question. The only thing she was really bothered about is do his parents like you? Because back home, they know racism is a big thing here. Okay. Are you sure his parents like you? Are they supportive? Is he a Christian? Is he a good guy? You know, that's all she was worried about. But she wasn't worried about race. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. obviously with our circumstances, we haven't got to I haven't really got to meet her family. Okay. I mean, we've had like some phone calls, but the signals always really crappy and yeah. delayed you can barely understand each other so i'm still waiting for that like real interaction to where i can like go hug them and embrace them and really just talk with them and what about your family jesse how was how was it introducing pearl and getting to know her uh, generally pretty easy um so i just you know through our dating i kind of just spoke to my parents about her it's like yeah she's got an accent it's pretty good she's really nice um so I'd say the biggest barrier is just um, them getting used to the accent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could tell during dinner, they're always like very, <laughs> very focused on what yeah. she's trying to say. Um, yeah. But other than that, no, they loved her. She was sweet and like the issue of race wasn't an issue at all. Like no. as soon as their son brought a woman who he cares for, that like all that other crap went out the window. What degree are you trying to pursue PhD in, Pearl? Um, environmental resource and policy policies that to that will promote pl- uh, climate change mitigation mm-hmm. yeah environmental sustainability yeah stuff like that and are you thinking to do something more like advocacy work and yeah i'm thinking of something more like that and hopefully um, i have these two organizations i want to work with i hope i get a chance to work with them uh, that's the un and then the world oh. bank of course that would be amazing that sounds like a, a really great place to be so i i wish you luck i hope that really works out for you people generally are not feel like view you differently if you have an accent or something would you agree that was similar in your situation so what like when i came you know like i say the fact that i you are very timid and the fact that i know i have an accent i don't like to speak up mm-hmm. if i know the answer because I'm like, I might have to repeat myself again. And another thing is that I speak very fast. So I have an accent and I speak very fast. That's bad. <laughs> That's how I see it. So sometimes I have to tell myself, okay, fine. When you start speaking, make sure you slow down. Don't just speak so fast. But mm. I speak fast and I don't, I can't control it. And before you realize I'm speaking so fast and probably didn't hear me and they'd be like, okay. But I'm like, 
I'm very sure you didn't hear what I said. And what would you say to people who are um, in similar shoes, coming from different country, who have an accent and like any kind of advice you want to give them? I would just say they should just be themselves. You mm-hmm. know, just be yourself. Speak as you. Don't try to speak as them. But what mm-hmm. I've realized is that over time, your way of pronoun- pronouncing some words might change because you pick it up from them, which mm-hmm. I don't think it's bad because when you go to Rome, you do what Romans do. Yeah. Like when I speak to some friends back home, or my family are like, you are slurring. I'm like, I'm slurring? No, that's how I talk. Mm-hmm. But they think I am. Maybe I don't know it, but I don't think I'm slurring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but they are thinking my voice or my accent is changing, but I don't think it is. Yeah. So let's say just be yourself. And over time, you probably might pick up without even realizing. Yeah, like when I first came, they asked me, what's your name? I'm like, Pearl. No, Pearl. That's how we pronounce it. But he has like Pearl, you know, the R. You have to make it <laughs> So, but like what pal peril i'm like no <laughs> uh, your name is a huge part of your identity and it's especially when you're in class and the professor is about to take the attendance and they you always get the like uh heart palpitations before they get to your name i don't know if you agree <laughs> i do a lot of things um I love for encouraging international students to try the U.S. or anything. Obviously, we she goes to SIU, um, middle of Illinois place. Until I met Pearl, I wouldn't have realized how many Nigerians, Ghanaians, or like other multiple intercontinental uh, students we actually have here. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm sure it's like that most all over the, any campus. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're worried, like, I'm going to be the only person from so-and-so at this entire school, that's probably not true. Yeah. Um, like I said, she's got a huge group. I mean, mm-hmm. I heard a big lunch today about just Africans and Ghanaians or something. So we we'll yeah. have a big get together. I'm sure there are several Asians or, you know, yeah. Russians or whichever, South yeah. America. So you just got to get in your niche and yeah. kind of find the people that you can relate to like that. As far as I noticed, when you're here uh, and you're all in the same boat, it, it becomes almost irrelevant where you're from. You just kind of have to connect with people and and support each other in that situation you know you're all in the same boat you're all navigating a completely different culture uh do you have any advice for international students especially after you first you know first land like landing in a different country any kind of tips for what they should do where they should go i should probably talk like uh financially it seems like some students get kind of sidetracked by like the expenses that they generally have yeah yeah so like okay let me talk about that first i think before they get here what they should do is to make sure they find out from their department or the school that bills will have to pay because even if you have an assistantship you still have to pay student fees yeah. it looks like some departments don't tell some some of their students so they come in here thinking oh i don't have to pay any thing and then they're like wow i have to pay this i didn't plan for that how do i do it yeah um, so i think they should talk to their their department or their school to mm-hmm. know what fees we're paying and how much it will be so they can mm-hmm. plan for that it should like at least save some money before coming they shouldn't just come like without much money on them yeah. and i can't say how much so yeah. <laughs> reasonably a little different <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, and when they get here they should also like try to connect with other international students and the only way they can do that is to like go for programs for international students or for new students so like siu we have a coffee hour every friday mm-hmm. and you see international students over there so you can interact with them and then you probably might end up finding someone from your home country and you can hang out with them and if you have challenges talk to people and mm-hmm. just know that you're not the only one going through that so there's this guy from nigeria uh, he came this fall he's mm-hmm. taking a course with me and he was telling me i was telling him how i had to cry when i first came that i wanted to go back home and he was like wow i'm glad i'm having this conversation with you i feel very good right now because i was feeling the same way and i thought it was just me i'm like no it's not just you yeah and then you wouldn't know like people are going through the same thing until you talk to someone else so yeah they should just be open talk to other people and try to make friends let's talk a little bit about like uh immigration to the united states this whole process you guys want to talk about like how so far this process has been um well in general i'm just doing a lot of research um knowing uh, like the status of your visa, um, where you can and can't go, or travel restrictions um, during this process. Mm-hmm. We were thinking about going like to Ghana for like this past spring, but like, well, the visa expired, no more in this paperwork, we'll be able to get back. Mm-hmm. Um, just doing a lot of research on what you can and can't do, um, all the forms that you need. 
Um, obviously, you got great videos on that, and which helped us out very much. Yeah. I know Pearl was going through like 10 seconds at a time, like, okay, so now we have this thing to do, and then we're going to do this. <laughs> so it's very helpful, and hopefully um, it'll go smoothly. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely make sure you have the financial resources to do it. Um, it's not something you can just willy-nilly, like, yep, let's throw these papers off. I mean, it takes a considerable investment. Also, just be prepared for the wait time. Uh, don't expect like, yeah, we're going to do this, you know, a month later, we're going to have this settled. <laughs> don't make any plans until you get your green card because who knows how long it's going to be. Yeah. Do you guys have any kind of advice uh, for maybe what you could do in the meantime while you're waiting? Um, obviously, uh, people she knows, um, one of her friends is like a hairdresser. Uh, so if anyone does hair, that's always a very needed thing. I kind of do that just designing things or doing hairdos. Yeah. Just um, getting money from on the side. Yeah, you might be able to help out in like yard work or cleaning houses um, to maybe neighbors or just people you know. Maybe. Just things that obviously you can do cash. Yeah. Because you, know, you can't obviously work anywhere. So yeah. how many mm -hmm. kind of little skills that you have or you can develop a skill, maybe knit something or create things to sell um, just to add a little income coming in. Going international schooling or an international relationship, um, you're going to have all these challenges you're going to have all these obstacles um just don't let them slide by don't procrastinate um definitely do your research ahead of time plan for things um so you don't get caught off guard and have to have some logistical issue break up a solid relationship and if you are trying to uh, start an immigration process like apply or change your status you can find more videos on her channel she has a lot of videos like very helpful ones <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me in this interview it was really fun to actually finally get to know you guys like in person <laughs> via video chat viewers as well if you have any comments obviously feel free to comment down below and i'm sure uh, both myself and Pearl and Jesse will uh, respond to your comments as well. Uh, follow them on social media, follow their YouTube channel to see their journey. Let's help them get to 1000 subscribers. I think that's that's a huge milestone that that will help them out a lot. So.